one of the first procedures we're going to do is get access into the dispensing uh, unit and actually shut off the, uh, the main ball valve in the back. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's the ball valve. We're going to go ahead and take this from, from a normally open position to a closed position. This shuts off all the fuel going into the dispenser. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the bucket and we're going to relieve the pressure out of the system by turning on the dispenser and dispensing the rest of the fuel quantity into a bucket. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and turn off the emergency fuel shutoff switch. Just go ahead and press this in, and that shuts off the system. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and take off the front cover, lift this up off the dispenser, set it off to the side so it's out of our way. And as we can see right here, we got the, the filter, which we're going to be replacing. And we'll take a absorbent pad and we'll stick it right underneath this. Grab a filter wrench. Place it on the filter. Preferably as close to the top as possible. And we'll go ahead and take this off really easily. And once the pressure has been reduced, we can completely remove it. We got it off. <coughs> remove it and put it in place in the bucket. Always make sure that we have removed the old seal. If this is not removed, this could be a potential for a leak. Go and clean the bottom of the filter base up. Now with our new filter here, we need to put the fresh clean fuel in. Once we have the, the, uh, the new fuel into the filter, we'll take a little bit of motor oil, which is just a lightweight oil, and we'll coat the top of the, the seal right here to make sure that it, it seals tightly up against the housing. Then after we got the filter filled up full of, uh, full of unleaded gasoline, in this case, and we've got a little bit of oil on the seal, we'll go ahead and install it back into its original position, screw it into the housing, And it's most important is when you when you when the seal actually touches the housing. At this point, what we need to do is give it at least a half to three turns of the uh, on the filter, so we're not stressing out the at the at the filter or going to be cracking the the filter itself. And now, before we decide to uh, put this uh, the uh, dispenser back in service, we're going to go ahead and open up the the uh, ball valve and the emergency shutoff switch and put it back in service and we're going to inspect to make sure we have no leaks around the filter and cause a, a, a spill into the ground. Okay, now that we got the dispenser back into uh, service, we're going to check to see if there's any leaks. We're going to remove the dispenser nozzle and we're going to fill up this portable container that's on the, on the ground and we're going to inspect to see if the filter has any leaks. So we're roughly going to put about a gallon in here. And we've pumped about a half a gallon, still no leaks that are visible. And now we have exactly one gallon. We dispense through and put the nozzle back into its holder, shut off the system. <coughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and just inspect around here to see if there's any leaks around the, around the unit. And as you see, no leaks at all. And that concludes our filter change on a dispenser.